there's uh, you know, there's a good side to this, and I'll get to that later. But there's potentially a dark side for people in our industry. You know, if you if you listen to everything that I've said so far, you might start to think, well, gosh, you know, uh, what's the future for condition monitoring people, reliability people, uh, operators of equipment, and even maintenance people? I mean, if you could automate all of this, do you need people in, in in all those fields. Um, so there is the potential for that. I mean, I can imagine a person might be concerned about that. Do I believe that those all those job roles will go away? No, I don't. So what I'd like to do now is talk a little bit about the challenges, as I understand them, that face artificial intelligence in our environment and then talk about what we can do about it, what we can do to add value to the company, um, work alongside these artificial intelligence systems. So my following comments, you could interpret as the reasons why artificial intelligence won't work. I'd rather you didn't look at it that way, just that it's the challenges that we must overcome to make artificial intelligence work. So. The first and important point, I guess, is that if you listen to some of the, um, well, the, the industry journals, the, the interesting thing about our industry over the last 40 years, whatever I've been involved with, for the most part, it's always been um, a little sort of hidden secret. You know, a lot of technical people, understood about vibration and infrared and, and so on and condition monitoring and the people higher up in the companies didn't really know about these things. I mean, there's obviously exceptions in places and people higher in the companies might have known about protection systems as part of a safety system, but not condition monitoring and condition-based maintenance. Well, all of a sudden that is changing. All of a sudden there are some very big companies, but the world's largest companies, the IBMs and PwCs and Googles and, and the rest of them, Amazon even, um, you know, they, they're seeing this, they're talking about predictive maintenance and the, the, the message they're selling is, we will make your equipment reliable, we will keep your process running because we'll have these systems. So what I would like to point out is that most of what I've talked about so far, is systems that can detect fault conditions, you know, abnormal operation, and then the system will respond to that and hopefully manage that uh, situation as best as it can, whether that's, you know, scheduling an outage to do the corrective maintenance work or changing the operation speed and, you know, whatever it is. But what I think industry is missing because it's now business people talking about this who perhaps aren't very familiar at all about the equipment. They need to understand more about what are the contributors to reliability. Well, it starts with the design and project management process. AI is not gonna help with that. People are still gonna cut corners, you know, uh, choose equipment that's not ideally suited because it's a little cheaper or something like that. Um, procurement people, you know, people in the purchasing department, again, will make choices because it's the cheapest option, not because it's the best, you know, it's the most reliable piece of equipment, most maintainable, operable, and, and so on. There still needs to be quality control. Even if you've made those first decisions correctly, we need to do acceptance testing and things like that to make sure that the equipment we get and the, the overhauls and so on that we perform are performed to the highest standards. When we look at spares management, you know, there's one whole argument about what spares you keep and the economics of all of that, which comes into this, but it's also, whether the spares stay in good condition while they're sitting on the shelves. You know, are they vibrating? Are they getting dirty, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And therefore, when they're installed, they have a reduced life. Um, then we can look at the way the equipment is installed um, and commissioned and started up. And then the ongoing care, the, the lubrication, the cleaning, et cetera. And then the way the equipment is operated. 
Now that last one, potentially AI can solve that operation question, potentially. You know, if, if the equipment be, was um, redesigned as necessary, so a control system can control the whole process, maybe the AI system can make sure that it is started up properly and run correctly and not too much stress is put on the machine and so on. But a lot of the contributors to reliability are back to human issues. And so the AI system could be really good at spotting problems, but all they're gonna do is, is identify lots of problems still. You know, the problems are, are gonna still be there because all these issues exist. So unless we also go to augmented reality and put people in exoskeletons and control what they do, um, potentially those sorts of mistakes will be made unless we employ robots that don't make human errors, unless of course the programmer of the robot made a human error. Um, you know, we can, <clears throat> we can have systems do the human work. But anyway, so while we have humans, while we have all those areas I just touched on, um, AI systems, Industry 4.0 is still going to challenge. It would be, you know, be a challenge to um, uh, achieve the goals that are being sold right now. And there's a lot of people selling it now, and a lot of industry leaders getting pretty excited about it. So let's talk a little bit more about condition monitoring. You know, I would assume most of you know how difficult it is to diagnose faults. There's lots of different types of machines out there in with different ages and there's different ways to potentially operate the same types of equipment, different speed requirements, loads and so on. Some are mounted on concrete bases, some are up on frames and there's more vibration. Uh, some are in very hot conditions, cold conditions, wet conditions, dry conditions, just the environments themselves are, are different. Um, there's different models of similar machines and people can put different bearings with the same bearing numbers um, in, in the same machine. So even though you know, the, the system, just because it's gone through an overhaul, a person could put in a the same uh, bearing part number, but it has a different number of rolling elements, and so suddenly the system says, "Oh, you know, what does that mean?" Um, it, so AI has the potential. I, I'm not selling AI short. AI can and is right now doing a very good job in certain applications, but it certainly does have to overcome those challenges. And I think there are a lot of people getting excited about AI without. And I'm talking about vendors in this case, as well as customers, without actually appreciating the nature of the challenge. And then, of course, there are different technologies when we talk about condition monitoring. Now, I've kept mentioning vibration analysis because it is one of the areas where people are developing um, machine learning systems. But of course, you know, there's there's more to detecting fault conditions than just vibration analysis. Obviously there's ultrasound, infrared, motor current analysis. Um, and then of course there's other applications, electrical equipments, uh, st uh, steam traps, etc., using infrared and, and such. So, you know, even if vibration analysis became, certain parts of vibration analysis became automated, there is still a lot of other technologies and a lot of other types of equipment faults that will, never, in my opinion, be um, monitored by these sorts of systems. Um, the other little challenge we have, although it's actually quite a big challenge, certainly when I've been involved with these sorts of discussions and directly with the systems in the past, um, in an ideal world, we would like to mount a, a vibration sensor, for example, well, on every bearing and in every axis to really understand what's going on. And sometimes we want to put the sensor at different points to see if it's resonating or if it's loose or something else. But of course, every single sensor is um, is has a cost, and uh, you know which people are trying to save money, so they're not necessarily keen to put as many sensors on as they would like. Um, plus, it's more data for the system to to transmit over the network and to uh, process, so uh, there are challenges there. And 
you know, if you've been involved with condition mon monitoring any amount of time, then you'll know that there's often, um, you know, special tests required to verify that the fault condition exists. So the question is, will AI um, overcome all these problems for for all assets? And you know, so I, I would argue it won't, not for all equipment in every plant out there. You know, I don't want to say it's not going to work. There are certainly, certainly applications for it. The other little comment to make at this point, perhaps as well, is that potentially, now I don't know who is uh, watching this presentation, but potentially if you've been experienced with reliability, condition monitoring, vibration analysis, and so on, you might be asking your question, yourself a question, well, you know, hey, I can do all these things right now. I don't need machine learning to acquire the data, diagnose faults, you know, report on equipment condition and so on. Um, how much will machine learning, et cetera, help me? Now, we'll come back to that question because it will help you. The, the other thing, to, the, the, the point to understand is that there are a lot of companies out there that don't have people like you. They just operate the equipment and it fails and they react to that. Or they, the machine starts to make a noise, they don't know what it means, so they shut it down and they have to sort of try and diagnose what's going on. Or, or they use really simple vibration analysis or ultrasound or something, which gives them an idea that there's a problem. You know, that there's a problem, but can they really diagnose the nature and severity of that problem? No. So, yes. Everything I'm talking about relates to the world of people who are experienced with condition monitoring and so on, but it especially applies to people who don't have it, don't and and don't have the uh, uh, well, perhaps they feel they can't afford it, but they don't employ people with the training and expertise to be able to utilise it.